Hello, everybody. Welcome to part two of CounterPointless's uh, look, our little retrospective back at uh, the Star Trek series Deep Space Nine. Bum, 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 bum. That's yep. That's how the theme song goes. Bum, 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 bum. Um, so last time we took a look at episodes bum, 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 bum. Sorry. one through six, I think, um, <laughs> yeah, I or, so. or maybe one through five, depending on how you consider the first episode, because yeah. it's kind of a two-parter, but, uh, it kind of is presented in as one episode on Netflix and I think on, even on IMDb. So whatever. I just want to say that, uh, uh, this is, this is the Stevie, uh, your fucking latch sucks, dude. <laughs> All right. No <laughs> one, had to get it in no there. one else is in on that. So I don't know. I don't care, dude. I don't All right. Well, go ahead care. and explain it then. Okay, so TJ paid Stevie to put a latch on our studio door because the animals kept giving it. I mean, like you guys have probably seen it if you watch fucking Deep Fat Fry. Yujiro or Salvador or some animal will just pop in the fucking show. And so Cheetah's like, Stevie, can you fix this? And he's like, yeah. Stevie <laughs> brings a clearly too small latch. And he puts two, just add insult to injury, he puts two of them on the door. And neither of them work. <laughs> and TJ had to pay him for this. Stevie, you're a fucking scam artist. Come back and put a proper size fucking latch. That actually closes the fucking door. Because we're still using a goddamn box of books. You fucking scamming piece of shit. Oh, Dude, Paul just, Paul just keeps laughing because he's I can't, I can't, can't look at the latch. Can't yeah, look the, the latch. latch is so pathetic. It's like looking at somebody and seeing their little wee-wee hanging out. I like, wish I had a picture of this latch. We'll take one. We'll actually put one in the description, like a link to one, dude. Here's Scotty and Stevie for reference. <laughs> so you know who who the principal characters are involved yeah, in Yeah, Stevie's in the blue, in case you don't know what Scotty looks like. <clears throat> anyway, um, so yeah, last time on this uh, counterpointless of uh, Deep Space Nine, we watched episodes uh, one through five or six, depending on how you count them, um, of uh, Deep Space Nine. Now we're going to take a look at uh, another batch of episodes. Another Halloween uh, we're going to do a, di- a little bit different this time because we're going to look at the IMDb pages and we're going to kind of talk about, we're going to talk about the episode and then we're going to kind of talk if we agree with the rating that sure. IMDb has given the episode. Okay, cool. And, uh, you know, Paul, I don't know, I know you don't like to give specific ratings, so you just have to say, like, whether you think it, it, the episode should be high or ballpark lower or it. ballpark it's it. Fine. You know, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be precision shit. Sure. Um, so the first episode we're going to talk about is Q-less, which is the only DS9 episode that uh, Q appears in, I believe. I don't think he ever reappears in that series. Does appear on Voyager a few times. That's kind of a shame. Um, yeah, it, it really is because uh, I feel like he was actually pretty interesting on DS9, but I can understand. I mean, the tone was maybe not uh, of the show is not right for Q. I don't know. Um, maybe they felt like they already had enough uh, comedy characters or something. Um, I'm really not sure why uh, why you didn't you don't see Q on the show uh, beyond this. Yeah, I think reducing Q to a comedy character kind of sells him short. <coughs> he's well, I mean, of, he was kind of that terrifying character. He was kind of really. that in this episode, though. I mean, well, I don't know. Sure. I mean, I've always kind of thought of him as a comedic character. He's got a sense of humor scary. wrapped up in what he does, but I mean, his existence is kind of terrifying. I mean, it's the the fact that he has a sense of humor in and of itself is terrifying when you take into account his his, his power. Yeah, his power. Yeah, his powers of, best, of a god. He was one of the most effective characters on the Next Generation, and, and to see. Him him just kind of used so poorly i mean deep space Nine did a lot of things better than the next generation especially if you like edgier and darker uh shows but <coughs> they did cute i don't think they did, i don't think they really did him justice well i'll tell you what like i liked most about this is i think that this episode did a really good job of establishing how different cisco is from uh picard oh, even even that. outside of the first episode where they kind of have that clash of personalities and this one um, there's a really great moment where, you know, uh, Q is fucking with Cisco and he dresses up like a 1920 style boxer. He's like, come on, let's do some fisticuffs. And Cisco just lays him out. Like it's a pretty funny moment. Cisco just rears back and punches him square in the fucking face. And Q sets up and said, well, Picard never hit me. And, and he uh, said, oh, and, and then Cisco is just like, I'm not Picard. He kind <laughs> right. of growls it. And he's yeah. like, I'm not Picard, you know? Yeah, it's a it's a great moment. Um, but outside <laughs> of that, 
not a super great episode, unfortunately. No, kind of middle of the road, especially for a great character like Hugh. Maybe that's why they didn't bring him back. Maybe they realized, like, maybe this dynamic well, doesn't work as well. One, isn't it like uh, Vash or someone is found? Well, I'll go ahead and read the synopsis really okay. quick just He's to like jog everyone's memory. Or something. The runabout Ganges returns Deep Space Nine in serious trouble. The ship has no power. The hatch can't be opened and oxygen is running out. Also, there seemed to be an extra person on board. O'Brien is able to open the hatch and recognizes the guest as Vash. Ash, a corrupt archaeologist from his time on the Enterprise, also had a little bit of a romance with Picard in that yep. series. Uh, she tells him she's been traveling in the Gamma Quadrant for two years and has collected artifacts there. O'Brien, meanwhile, can't find anything wrong with the ship other than the power being drained. Uh, then the same malfunction appears on DS9. Dangerous blackouts are hitting the station. Meanwhile, Vash gets an unexpected uh, visit in her quarters. It's Q, the omnipotent being, and he seems upset Vash has left me once or back. So this episode is kind of split between this plot about the artifact and Q uh, and, uh, you know, uh, her, basically. Uh, the artifact that it turns out one of the artifacts she brought back from the Gamma Quadrant is what's draining the power and it's about her trying to sell it and uh, interacting with Quark and Quark running this big auction. That's a great. That's uh, Quark gets treated pretty well in this episode too. That's a good scene. Uh, uh, when, I love. When I love when she, she's doing the yeah. the whole like history of the artifact and telling him where it's from and where it's made. And he's like, "What are you doing?" Yeah. He's like, "You just tell him how rare it is. Yeah. That's I don't want to hear where it's from or what significance it has." Good. Yeah, so he just... I, I always love the way they tease Quark throughout the series, um, I feel like this is not a bad episode, but it's not really a great one. It's kind I of agree. A, it's kind of a middle-of-the-pack episode. Well, There's not nothing too dramatic about it. You know what this episode does it. introduce, though? The fucking teasing Quark. Like, Quark, so many times with the series, has, like, unimaginable wealth laid in front of him just to be snatched away. Yeah, that is a recurring trope, and this is kind of the first example of it. Like, ooh, Quark's gonna hit the fucking jackpot. Nope. <laughs> yeah, because the, the artifact is draining that, the, all the power from the station and actually taking them towards the wormhole. is It gets up to like 3,000 latinum in the auction, so Quark's like, I'm rich, I'm set for life, and then of course... Uh, they have to uh, beam it away, <laughs> so his, his fortune essentially is gone. Uh, right. So the episode is sitting at about a six point eight on IMDb. Fair. I think that's I think that's a reasonable rating for my money. I don't know. I, I'm gonna avoid going on a rant about what the fuck does a star mean and what is it in comparison to. Yeah, we've heard it before, to. Paul. So I'll just leave that out and say I guess so. Yeah, I, I think it might be a little high, but I think it's bumped up by the presence of Q. I think a lot of nostalgia factor there. Oh, and and we, sure. there's a the couple of good scenes like we talked about. I think it. I think it. I think it works at about a six point eight. Um, yeah, I might have put it a little lower myself, but that's why I don't do these. So right. yeah, I'm yeah. fine with it. So ballpark, little lower. As a, I think it's as about a, right. As a ballpark, yeah, I agree with Paul. I wouldn't rate it that high, but as a ballpark, I'm, I'm not in too much disagreement. I'd probably it. put it right around there. Uh, the next episode is Dax. Love this episode. Yeah. Love uh, Jed, this episode. I'll go ahead and just start I'll, by I'll reading just tell the synopsis. You now I don't agree with the rating, but let's go ahead. A group of aliens, yeah, save that to the end. A group of aliens follows Jedzia Dax and then overpower her. They try to take her uh, of the ship, they mean off the ship, as Commander oh, Sisko is only. Ba- All right, go ahead. I mean, okay, so like Jed, Dax gets captured by these aliens and taken to the ship, and it turns out that. While she was Curzon Dax, because she's got this worm inside of her, that's Dax. While she was Curzon Dax, she committed some crime, and she's being called to account for it. And uh, it turns out being a really interesting kind of courtroom drama episode about whether or not you can try Jadzia Dax for the crimes of Curzon Dax. And you also get to learn a little bit about Dax the Worm, which is really interesting. <clears throat> I think it's kind of cool. Uh, it, it really helps you... Because it's kind of confusing to explain the whole symbiote thing, um, symbiont I mean, uh, or whatever. Right. Uh, so this episode kind of delves into that and how it works and how distinctive her personality is from her previous incarnations and how it's interpreted by the Trill. Um, one thing that's really satisfying is the episode starts with, you know, this, this shows Wesley, Dr. Bashir getting shot down by Dax and... Thank I really goodness. Enjoy, I really enjoyed that, and then he kind of creepily decides uh, to go back and walk with her, even though she's like, "I'm good." And then he he sees her being kidnapped, and they have a big fucking to do about that. And they and like they they rigged the station with a bunch of things to go <coughs> to bypass their security feet, uh, measures, and then finally at the last second, Cisco does some fucking rigmarole, and he fucking hit the trans tractor beam just as they're leaving, which is kind of the introduction of what Paul said to this whole courtroom drama thing. Right. And it's, it, it, you know, it's really interesting. That oh, I, I got to say, I love uh, this woman 
who uh, plays the judge. She was great. She, uh, I, I remember just, her from, uh, like, um, uh, she was in Mrs. Doubtfire yeah, at one she point. Was. Well, she was in... Um, she, the, what, what she's playing, too, here is that uh, this guy argues because whatever race he's from has a treaty with the Federation, they can just, they could have just take uh, Dax. They don't need to have a formal extradition hearing, but it's actually a Bajoran station, yeah, so. so she comes in to play as the Bajoran arbiter. And, and right. she is fucking great in this. She, she was really in is. a Liar Liar with Jim Carrey as well. She usually uh, plays like a bit part where she's kind of a snooty person. I think she really, I don't, really don't, don't want to say she rose to the occasion of like stealing the show or anything, but she was definitely, she was a great addition. She, she was, was welcome. And I love her just kind of sassy attitude of where, you know, she's taking it seriously, but she's not afraid to be cavalier about uh, her feelings towards what's going on. And she just kind of views the whole proceedings like, all right, I'm the fuck. Yeah. All right. Well, I, well, I guess, has, she has, guess I got to take this seriously because a woman's life's on the line and all, but you know, whatever. Yeah. Like, she, like she can barely be bothered to deal with it. This episode might be one of my favorite of the batch of six that we watched here. I mean, it uh, really, it's really good. It's interesting. I love the questions raised. I love that the defense, you know, goes with the, uh, well, this is not Curzon Dax. This is Jadzia Dax. And while the symbiont and side of her might be the same the woman is not and you can't extradite her for the crimes of, the, of something that happened before think, she ever became what she is i think another thing to mention too is it also that you see a strain in the relationship between cisco and dax because she doesn't want to reveal information about what happened about that's the, true about the accusations so it's good character development for cisco and uh for jedzia dax so it's really a great episode it really it really enriches the series and because i mean especially with a lot of stinker episodes and so far that we've seen like they're not really good they don't really do much like like the, like the previous episode we talked about it just it didn't really add anything to, uh, to the series but this episode really does there's it's definitely really, a lot of filler episodes in this first season this is not a filler episode yeah i always is, love these courtroom uh, drama episodes in uh, tng and the few that they did in uh, tes and like it's just as good here i i loved it it was fun it was fun to learn more about who's quickly becoming my favorite character on the ship, Dax. So just the most interesting character to me uh, so far. So, yeah. Do we want to, <clears throat> do we want uh, to, to, you know, tell how it wraps up or we just want to leave that? Um, I think we'll let the, I think we'll let it be spoiler free okay. unless you guys feel like there's well, some yeah, reason if we to gotta talk spoil about something that. we will but, I mean, I'm not know. gonna I'm not gonna go out of my way not to spoil something but I don't think we I don't think it really needs to be discussed sure. the res- resolution okay. I like that. the resolution is pretty interesting um so 7.1, I don't agree. I would say the episode is at least... I think it belongs higher up. Uh, I, I would give it, if I had to put a number on it, I, I'd say 8.5. Yeah, I'd be way more comfortable with that. Um, I think this is a really good episode. It's not a classic by any stretch. But, but it's not one to miss. It's it's on the it's in the upper echelon. It's in the upper, like, you know... Um, Especially in this first season. Yeah, so I mean, far. like, if, as far as the first season goes, this is a standout. Uh, I think it deserves a higher than a 7.1. What do you think, Paul? Uh, yeah, I agree. I'd put it at like an 8, probably. I, I think it's a little uh, abused <laughs> at a 7. So I think an 8 or or more would probably be good for it, especially considering its comparison to some of the previous yeah, episodes. Yeah, watching Dr. Bashir get punched in the face gives it the extra point. Five. Yes, you know? that was nice. <laughs> you know, that's a nice little touch in the beginning. <laughs> So. All right, so uh, this next episode is called The Passenger, and this is a, a really unfortunate episode in a lot of ways oh, for me. It's um, so, yeah. Because this is all about uh, this, uh, this the, there's a, a battle and shit, and uh, there's a crash. Uh, the uh, One of the uh, people in the crash is badly burned and killed, it turns out that they were this criminal named Vantica. It was uh, a criminal mastermind. Who's this criminal mastermind, and this woman who was his pursuer, who was also in the uh, the crash or the fight, um, is like, Vantica is still alive. I know he's still alive. You know, he would never put himself in a situation where he would die like this easily. He's got to still be alive and somehow. Just kinda going, oh, and really? then stuff starts happening on the station where they're like, maybe this Vantica dude is alive, even though they can see clearly his dead body. Uh, so it turned. They they develop this theory that oh well maybe he's somehow sh- jump bodies and they think maybe he's in the investigator. What, what really sucks. But is, then it turns out that he's in Bashir, and that's when it all just yeah, kind of falls what, apart. What really sucks about this episode too is that describing it. Even having seen it several times, it sounds really interesting, but it's just really... They, well, I feel fail. like it was really interesting until, until Bashir fucks it up. 
Because I feel like the build up to Vantica was cool. And then God. when Bashir is revealed to be Vantica, he's like, oh, I am Vantica. Yeah. It's really overblown. Alex, and Alex, I Alex, talk did a, did a, like did a, did a, this an, an because I am evil. Did an absolutely abysmal job switching to Vantica. It is, he, he just was so far off the mark. It was laughable. Like they should, they, they should have scrapped it. Like seeing him do it, the performance. Like the director here, Paul Lynch, should have just been like, "Cut, no." We're writing someone we else. We gotta write. So, we gotta write someone else in this like, part. It's, it's already the guy that plays like Garrick. He could have pulled it off. It's already based on a lame fucking premise, though. I mean, just the body switching bullshit. I don't know. It's just a like the concept, it is trite, but the, it could have been done well. well no, but maybe I, what it could have been what done was better. Done, but what like I think, the, what I think was promising about the concept, I'm not. I mean, the body switching thing is not the cool thing. It was just how much they were building up, like how Vantica. badass Vantica is. So I was thinking, like, oh yeah, man, Vantica, he's gonna be crazy. In- instead, it's and then it's like, you will do I am evil. I'm like, oh, okay, he's got just generic can, villainitis. Can you whatever. Play some of the audio of him as Vantica. Is that possible? I can. Let me see if I can find. I mean, some of it. not only I, I, this. I think people need to hear this. It is so awful. Like you know who Vantica. Like I knew who Vantica was gonna be oh, from the first scene. Yeah, of course. It's telegraphed. Like yeah, because v- Bashir's the one who's holding yeah. him when he dies, and Bashir shit. is attending to him as he dies and he grabs him and goes, make me live, and then he dies, and then yeah. shit starts happening on the ship, and you're like, oh, Bashir. Bashir is Vantica, and he is, and it sucks. The reveal sucks. The final scene is just nonsensical. Gosh, like There's no... They've there's... got him trapped in a tractor beam, and he's firing the impulse engines, countering the tractor beam. You could, um... If you go, open it's up, just if you if you did this, you, if you went up in Netflix and just because you're just playing the audio, you're not actually gonna yeah. Netflix. I guess I could find it there. Yeah, because I mean, but like, no one. Strangely enough, no one has felt it worthy oh, of uploading wow. on YouTube. I mean, this just really I don't just, blame them. Just typifies why. I mean, Bashir at this point is, is the series Wesley. He's just he they, they they insert him so much. The actor just cannot pull it off. He's trying his damnedest, but it just it just it it feels so. It, it, it really just I think the best way to put it is like how the Wesley just doesn't connect with the character like he just doesn't get it yeah like this is him as be, being Vantica and it just he just does this wide eyed goofy over the top I'm evil performance and it's like, snidely whiplash villain performance that just doesn't play well at all with a little bit of subtlety probably could have been cool but there could have really at least isn't. been serviceable I mean you know maybe, maybe. it doesn't maybe like, it doesn't have the potential to be some kind of fucking great episode but it certainly could have been better than it was um, I think there was at least a little more potential there than that oh, like the voice he uses is just sorry there was some Netflix shit playing over us for a second there because Netflix now whenever you open it plays some bullshit great thanks Netflix but uh, it wasn't for that long uh, why shouldn't it? Here we go. Yeah, we're gonna pull up the ep- uh, the episodes. You guys can hear all because you just want to hear this stupid fucking People audio. People need to hear how bad this is, dude. It is bad. I mean, if nothing else, if you skip this episode, which I wouldn't even honestly blame you because it doesn't advance the story in any way. I mean, it doesn't help develop Doctor Bashir's character at all, which I don't at this point really want to be developed, but. I mean, they, they kind of do something interesting with this character later on, but in these early seasons, he's just almost just under. I mean, he, I will be honest. I've been watching season two, and he is a little bit better already. Still not great, but... It takes a few seasons for him to even get serviceable as a character. I mean, just early on, he's just like, he's cringeworthy. Almost every scene he in, he's in... All right, let's see if I can find the scene where he, I am Vantica. Raw. Evil. You cannot even believe. He's just such a generic villain. It's it's painful. He's painfully generic. I don't like. I just can't believe that this was taken seriously. And I mean, Star Trek has definitely had some really bad acting in it. So like, I kind of get it. But this just goes beyond the pale. This All is right, bad for here you Star go. Trek standards. That's Quark talking to him. Oh. Not at all, gentlemen. So this is the big reveal that Bashir is Vanica. I've been expecting you. Dun, dun, dun. Terrible. Boo. Dun, 
dun, dun. So what did IMDb so say about this turd? Uh, with less than fucking IMDb no. says six point four. No, no, I would no. say way too high. I would say this deserves this like lower than that. Yeah, I would say this is really unfortunately pretty bad. I it mean, needs I, to be way lower. I don't even. I, I don't give out really ones unless it's just total schlock. But I mean, this is like this is like a three. This I really don't know what people like in this episode. Uh, I mean, we can go take a look and see if anyone uh, explains uh, one of their high ratings. A good episode, but the crew seems stupid here. Whatever. All right. Yeah. Uh, who cares? Yeah, they're wrong. <laughs> you think this episode is good? You're you're wrong. If you think this episode is good, you're wrong. You're wrong. Oh, this is the worst. Wow. This is way worse even stinker than the last one. To stinker. Uh, this is the worst episode of the first season so far by a long shot. This is the worst episode of this series. In is my it opinion. really? Yeah. I wow. would. S- I mean, well, I, there's I other episodes good. I don't like, but this is. I mean, this I can't think. I can't ones. think of a worse fucking episode than I, this. I, I I I can't recall every single episode, so I'm not going to go that far. But I will say it would easily be in the top three. To this, me, this is the worst fucking episode. This is a lazy episode. So these aliens known as the Wadi show up from the Delta Delta Quadrant, the, and all gamma. they want to do is gamble. gamble. So they quadrant. go to Quark, and Quark, being the stupid ass Cheat he is, them. cheats them. And they get mad, and they're like, we're going to play another game. So they bring out their special game. Look at these fucking aliens, by the way. They suck. They're just normal human beings with purple shit on their heads. And I mean, mullets. It's like, I feel I like... I love that, the mullet. The mullet race is here. I feel like this episode was written in one fevered night of cocaine-fueled, like, writing. Oh, shit, we need an episode. Fuck, man. We, no, we spaced off a whole episode? All right, all right, all right, all right. It's just terrible from start to finish. So anyway, the game that they play kidnaps several primary members of the crew and creates sends them to this other dimension where they're pawns in the game and Quark slowly learns as he's playing the game that he's in charge of their fate and that they might die in there and he you know gets more and more anxious about playing as he goes along yeah they, they totally reduce Quark's character like like you said Paul they have a scene where Quark begs you know like oh please don't it's like so- it was awful seeing him reduced to that I mean it's just like and there was no, like the build up to it made no sense he just all of a sudden is turned into a blubbering groveling sniveling mess which is everything that his character isn't I mean you know he might do that if there's profit in it but this like there are ways to show that Court cares about Or if about his these. life is on the line. Right. But, but like, he's not going to do it for, you know, I mean, like, I, I understand he doesn't want them to die and he has some affection for the people that, you know, the, on the ship, but... Or the station, but but he's not but gonna. Cor- not Cork Cork is not gonna fucking it. be reduced to a blubbering mess by that. Yeah, well, Cork's gonna actually fucking try to try to figure out a, a, an angle so that he can keep them alive, not go please. please I mean, it's a terrible scene. And, and here's the dumbest thing about this episode: so they make you the whole time like, are they gonna die? And they just do a total cop out. Nope, because they all, they all do end up dying in the game, but they're fine. Yeah, it's just a game. <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> like know. this, this would have been like. Think about this: first contact with an alien species, they come onto your fucking shit. They kidnap the senior officers of your fucking space station and put them through psychological torture for six hours straight. Then they just get to leave. No. These people would have been fucking, like, taken custody of and shit. I mean, it, like, this... I don't know. None of this makes sense. Cork isn't the only character reduced to a fucking just total mess. What about that weird hopscotch scene where they're like... Oh, God. Well, Kira in the, is one of the ones that's in the game. And I don't know if you guys noticed it in this episode, but I know she's a hothead and all, but she's reduced to just a totally unlikable, pedantic, angry, like temper tantrum prone piece of shit in this episode. No, none of the characters are written well. None of them are written right. It's just really bad. Like the only one that even seems like himself is Cisco. Cisco, you know, maintains a little bit of command, but it's like Kira just falls apart immediately, which doesn't seem anything like her. She's less hardened, like free fighter you'd think she'd be cool and icy under pressure but instead she just turns into a, an emotional fucking wreck yeah, quark is just, quark totally is just a total breakdown to- totally not a ferengi in this has no f- like 
he he actually chooses not to double his profits like several times, and I'm just like, no what way. is going on? Because no like way, at dude. some point he's given these these choices. He's like, yeah, if if you send him down the hard path, double your profits. If you send him down the easy pr- path, your profits and stay he's the like, same. Nope, safe path. And he takes the safe path like three times. I'm like, what? Did did they kidnap Cork and put him in the game too and replace him with a clone? This is a terrible episode. It's boring. It's lame. Um, I, I don't know what else to say about it, honestly. I mean, uh, 5.9. 5.9 no. is doing it way too much goddamn justice. This episode justice. is a one. This is episode is like, if you skip this episode, you'll thank us. Yeah, I would say, I mean, honestly, unless you're just a total completist, skip it. Yeah, it's not going to... It's not it worth it. Advance the main if anything, it, it, it... I mean, it, it does back. worse than not advance it things. It actually backwards. detracts from characters that yeah, you might it actually, it like. Yeah, it actually damages the characters of the show. Do not yeah. watch this episode unless you just it's absolutely have garbage. to see it for some completion. Sake. It's hot garbage. Fuck this episode. Uh... It just occurred to me there's a lot of quark centric episodes right in a row yeah. around this part of the series. This one's a much better episode than I the love last this one. Episode. This is, a great this episode. is actually one of my it's definitely I mean there's a there's quite a few Ferengi episodes. This is not one of my favorites. Uh, because the they hadn't season, really, really good. they hadn't got the, the the but this is kind of the template for the Ferengi type episode, and um, I think it's really good. Zach uh, is great. I love the dude who plays uh, Grand Nagus Zach, who you can see right here. Yeah, uh, he's great. Just um, a, he's a great character actor too, and he's in a lot of shit. Yeah, he is, and um, he's a. Uh, He's 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 fucking really great here. Uh, just this lecherous, fucking wrinkly, ancient Ferengi. He, he's basically the ultimate, you know, oil railroad baron character that just has all the angles figured out. It's the Godfather yeah. to the Ferengis, basically, and he yeah. shows up on the station. Having a meeting of the Ferengis to discuss who's going to get what in the new Delta, you know, who's Gamma who's quadrant. who's going to get to take the Ferengi profit hunting empire into the Gamma Quadrant. Yep. Um, and you know, basically the whole the whole show, um, the whole this whole episode is about him kind of setting up a a test for who is going to be his. Re- it's basically him testing his son. Yeah, he fakes his death. And, appoints um, uh, Quark, the new Grand Nagus, to kind of f- test his son to see what his son will do. Uh, his son and, and his son conspires with Nog, Quark's brother, to kill Quark. Uh, Nog is Nog is the son. Yeah, Rom. not Nog. Rom. I'm sorry, Rom. Rom, uh, Quark's brother, to the, to kill Quark by shooting him out of a fucking airlock. Um, oh, dude, it's beautiful. Oh, they, they have other assassination attempts, too. It's yeah, there's like, there's other ones. Uh, so, you know, Quark suddenly becomes the, the center of power, and, of course, Quark is not a- equipped to handle the machinations of these Machiavellian, you know, Ferengi all around him. So it's Quark just trying to bumble his way through it, just desperate, doesn't know what to do. It's really a great episode. Cause there's it- also a great side plot with um, Nog, the little boy Ferengi, and Jake Sisko. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, that's right, too. It's kind of cool. Um, you know, uh, Nog gets kind of swept up in all this, all the Ferengis being around and he's going to school now and that's a big no, no in Ferengi culture, just a waste of time. Cause there's no profit in it. Um, so he end up, ends up getting taken out of school and there's a little side plot where Jake, you know, helps Nog to keep learning, even though he can't go to school and it kind of develops their characters pretty well too. Um, and there's it, a whole it, thing about Cisco trying to kind of split them apart as well. Right. At first, he thinks they're a bad influence on one another, like everybody else does. But oh, then, yeah, then they have that moment where he's like, he finds him in the cargo bay tutoring uh, Nog because right. his parents. Is, 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 oh, that's right. Because there's a scene where the Nagus comes in. And it's like he's learning. And they're like, no, we forbid yeah. you to learn and go to school any further. Yeah. And he's Jake like, is like, you yeah, know, going to help he's, he's going to a school and being taught by a female, and like <laughs> the Grand Nagus is like, you permit this. You permit this to I happen? Lo- I love, the, yeah, I love the fucking voice he uses. Uh, <laughs> and uh, anyway, uh, at the end, um, the Grand Nagus, of course, reveals himself to still be alive, and uh, chastises his son for uh, not doing the proper thing. He's like, "No, you shouldn't have tried to kill Quark and take the fucking throne. You should have accumulated power quietly and uh, then, no, only was- killed him when uh, when the time was right." You know. Oh yeah, that was that was beautiful too. How, how Cork's life was seen but is disposable by everyone. <laughs> well, it's funny too because Cork uh, actually respects his brother, who he, he shits on the entire fucking series, but he actually respects him for trying to kill him. 
It's like, you know what? I would have done the same thing. Yeah, I don't know why Odo wasn't like, okay, that's attempted murder. You're going to jail now. Nah. But a little fun. With I guess he's just like, ah, Ferengis. That's how they are. You know, what how, they're Ferengis going to Ferengis. Probably what because he doesn't do? give a shit if he is killed or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's probably, <laughs> probably true. Probably, that's probably the real answer to that one. <laughs> No harm, no foul. Uh, I think this episode, uh, I'd probably rate it a little bit higher than a 7.1. 7.5. Probably. I'd say, you know, maybe 7.5, something like that. Um, but, yeah, I think it's a pretty fair rating. Um, Paul? Um, I'd, I'd put it up a little higher than that, honestly. I really enjoyed this episode. Yeah. I love the I love the look at Ferengi culture. I love um I love that there are more Ferengis around than usual in this episode. So there's a lot more. I just I, I really love the species. So whatever. Well, one thing I can tell you is for sure is as, as the series prog- uh, progresses, they do a lot more in depth. Well, they're the smart. Thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wait till you they, wait till you see little green men do. That's my favorite. Oh, dude, that's a cool. great episode. So yeah, but let's. Uh, but I'd put it up a little higher than a seven one. So you get about uh, seven, maybe five, a seven eight. five eight. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Respectable. Uh, this next episode is called uh, Vortex. A uh, man named Croden tells Odo he can... Okay, so this is a, there's a criminal on the station. Uh, he ends up killing someone in a firefight. He's imprisoned. Someone vows revenge against him. He's trying to convince Odo to let him escape the station because he keeps t- tantalizing Odo with, like... You know, Odo doesn't know where his people, what his people are, where they're from, um, so he's kind of tantalizing a, him with... This uh, is an okay episode, I would know, say. I, I don't think it's great. I don't with, think I could tell you about your people, you know? And I, don't, and I don't think it's bad, mainly because it gives Odo some more character development. I was a little disappointed that it, we didn't get to learn more. I'm sure we do eventually about, you know, but it, it oh, seemed like they were setting up that Odo was going to get to learn a lot more about what he is and where he came from. You don't really get that in this episode. Yeah, it's just, another, tr- it's just another crumb on the trail. Uh, I mean, I guess this will have to kind of spoil the ending, but uh, he, what ends up happening is that this dude ends up helping Odo out, and he, Odo finds out that the, he's he's in charge of transporting this prisoner back to his home planet where he'll surely be killed or tortured or whatever the fuck. And um, this dude ends up uh, revealing to Odo what his real plan was, which was to save his daughter who was being uh, pursued for political reasons on his planet when you speak out against the status quo the punishment is they come kill your family so he's gone to all this effort to keep his daughter safe she's in a cryostasis chamber and shit on this asteroid in the middle of a nebula and um odo kind of sees the human side of him but there's a like the way that he gets away with it at the end like they, they're so they they manage to elude the people that are pursuing them and uh odo and this dude and the daughter get out and as they're getting away this fucking vulcan science vessel hails them and's like hey is everything all right and odo's like oh yeah i've got two people here i saved from that explosion back there can you just take them to vulcan and they're like sure you know there's like no that, paperwork no transfer no like nobody's gonna look at the fucking logs on the runabout that odo's using and see that he beamed two people off the ship before he went back through yeah. the wormhole like none of that exists and you know so that's it's why a, i said there, there's some elements that are interesting in it but i just don't feel like it it delivers i'm it, not too it, it fun, i'm not too keen on the it. whole like criminal rogue but with a heart of gold thing that they put they do here either. Well, I thought it was interesting because up until that point they they make you kind of believe Odo is not really willing to bend the rules or change or be at all flexible. And this that is goes, true. He kind of can do that under the right circumstances. Like he believes this guy is getting a broad deal so he's like, you know what, fuck it. I think the just thing to do is actually to let you go. Well, earlier on though he falls for the obvious scam which doesn't seem like Odo at all. Even with the promise of like hey, I know where your people are from and I know where you can find more people like you. It's just obvious that that's not what's going on from the very fucking start yeah, to but, everybody but, but Odo. But somebody can be taken in by something they really want. Which- I just didn't think Odo was one of those types of people. I thought Odo would be able... Odo's the... You know, I mean, he deals with Quark on a day-to-day think, basis. Well, but I think, too, uh, I would argue that seeing that amulet where it, or, or the, the pendant that can change, I think that kind of makes it... Added go, a little credibility you know, to the like, story. Yeah, so you can see this, and he, and he sees it, and he's like, okay, this is kind of something similar to me. Maybe there is more to this guy's story. Sure. Sure. So, because because he is kind of skeptical too. I mean, <laughs> I mean, but there's also this overwhelming desire through Anoto throughout you know the first few seasons to find out more about his past, which is something they write into the character. So, I do think it kind of makes sense for the character having more knowledge about the series. I would just, but right from your perspective, I can I can kind of see where you're coming from. Yeah, uh, it just you know learning a little bit about Odo that I don't like. Yeah. 
seven, I think, is probably a little high. I would give it a six. Yeah, yeah I'm more, I think it's a little high, too. I'm more in that ballpark myself. I think it's a little bit overrated here. Um, I think it's just kind of a middle of the middle of the pack yeah, episode. Middle for me. of the pack episode. I think that's fair. Watchable doesn't really offend me, but I'm not really super into it either. Just kind of a pastime. Um, a disappointing ep- episode coming off the heels of the Nagus episode, though. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, this next episode is called Battle Lines. This episode I really do not like. Um, <laughs> I don't hate it like I hate. Um, the uh what was it called the the come along home or whatever the fuck or move along home or whatever the fuck that shit was i don't hate it to that level but i do hate it um i don't really know why it's just kind of lame um you know i don't really give a shit about kai opaka or what she means to her people and all that shit there's some really bad over the top acting by Kira in the scene where Kai Opaka. There's uh, a lot of dies. Plot, like, more security plot holes. So basically, Kai Opaka takes up Cisco on his offer for a tour of the station. And she's never left Bejor. She's this holy leader that's very important. She's to her basically people. like the Pope of she, Bejor. Cisco met her in the first episode. Yes. Um, so anyway, she comes to the station the first time she's ever left Bejor, and she's like, oh, I really wanted to go through that wormhole. And he's like, well, you know, there's nothing real scheduled to go through that today. But if you want, I'll take you through. So he, it's like three of them. It's him, the do- Dr. Bashir, and Kai Opaka get on a fucking and roundabout. Kira. And Kira. Oh, Kira, sorry. Yeah, get on a runabout and go through the wormhole. That's it. With the spiritual leader of the Bajoran people. They go through a wormhole into an unexplored quadrant of space where there might be hostile entities. And, of course, they get shot down by some fucking moon that they go to well, investigate. Yeah, there, there, there's, like, there's, there's basically a satellite grid on this moon. Because what happens is they, is they get like, a, like a, a sensor alert. And it's like, like, oh, we better go back. And she's like, no, we must follow the will of the prophets. You know, so they go. They, get sh- they, they do the, the fucking the shuttle crash lands on the planet episode, and then they got to get out of some situation. Yeah, and then on the planet, there's these two warring factions that have been sentenced to this weird prison where they have to go to names. I think it's like they a- have to go to war with each other eternally, and every time they die, the some kind of weird nano matrix bullshit brings them back yeah, to some life. Nano technology bullshit or whatever brings but them back to life. Off the planet, they wouldn't be able to live anymore. I guess. Yeah. So Kaiopaka is killed in the crash. Yeah, and then but she- then she's regenerated by the moon's biological field or whatever. And uh, they find out. So uh, the whole episode, the, the the message is a little heavy handed. It's yes. obviously this anti war episode. Why can't we all just get along? War is meaningless episode, and it's really just drilled into it because it really is meaningless on this planet. There's these two factions that are just endlessly killing each other, yeah, they and then can't they all really die. then they all come back to life, and they're just suffering and suffering, and they can't well, come just, together. It's just, just, bi- it's just bias and prejudice, and how it's innate, and how like they can't even like in, like they said they have a point like why are you guys fighting? It's like we can't even really remember. But it's just heavy. Don't trust, it's but, just heavy handed. It's oh, not dude, clever. It's, it's, it's too preachy. It's too heavy handed. It's, it's too way obvious. too focused. I mean, like it's way too focused on Kai Opaka, who's not interesting. He's a boring character. And she, Kira, yeah. like I said, when Kai Opaka dies for the first time, it's really cringy her over the top <laughs> no! and, and, and the, the end is basically that they find a way uh, uh, O'Brien and Dax go looking for them they find them they, they, they basically find out the grid is in place so they can't just beam them off the planet they find a way to take out one of the satellites they basically beam them off Kyle Packer is going to remain behind because she leaves she dies and she's like no this is my spiritual mission and you just well, don't really care it's like so long farewell this is, you're, you're lame and so is this episode this, I mean not only that but just think about the implications here so they get shot down on this moon the spiritual the most important person on Bajor is now missing yeah missing and, and they send the, the, the engineer and the science officer from the space station to go look for them alone yeah it just doesn't that doesn't make any sense no. it doesn't make any sense from a diplomatic standpoint that oops our the commander of our space station very like irresponsibly took this very important person off the planet and got her so now so now that he has to go back to the Bajorans and go oh i'm sorry your kaiopaka now lives on a prison moon in the gamma quadrant because <laughs> i because i fucked up 
I fucked up and didn't. Fu- I wasn't thinking, and I got too close to it, and she got shot down, and she died, but it brought her back to life. But if we take her off the moon, she's dead. So I'm sorry. Yeah. So she's Mia stuck culpa. There now. What's funny too is, is that in the first episode, he's trying desperately, and he needs her help to prevent a civil war on Bajor. And I think this is kind of sloppy writing because it never it doesn't really affect the show. I mean, it does to a little bit. Well, later. it it does. Yeah, it does but, later on. But, it, but but it doesn't have the immediate impact of like no one's like panicked. Like uh, there would yeah. be a fucking diplomatic meltdown between the Bajoran government and the fucking Federation over this. Yeah, and it doesn't really happen. Think if like. Trump took the Pope golfing and he got eaten by a fucking alligator or some shit. You know what I mean? Like, it would be a fucking, it would be a nightmare. But I, it's, I, almost, I haven't watched any episodes beyond 12. This is the 12th episode, I think, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I don't know if this is like, ref, if this is even referenced in the next episode, but I'm guessing it's, it's not. not. No, it's no, never it's mentioned not. again. Wow. It's never mentioned again. So this uh, is this is a really bad episode in my in my estimate. I really yes. didn't like it at all. No, it's a bad one. Um, I would say for me, 6.6 .6 is way generous on this. Super generous. This is about a, this is about a three, I would This say. is like a three, maybe, maybe like a three and a half tops. A four um, on a good day if you're just feeling really generous. <laughs> I mean, but. if you want to bang the chick that plays Kai Opaka, maybe a four. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's about the best you can. That's do. about it, dude. Uh, yeah, I don't know what anyone who I don't know who who the hell would rate this higher than a fucking. Yeah, it just doesn't it doesn't deliver on it. Like the, any of the it, even if you're just a generous person, I don't see how you give it more and, than and a five. Paul made a really great point. The continuity of the writing in the series it doesn't really work as an episode because. Yeah, I mean, she was introduced as she's super instrumental, and then a few episodes later, ah, she's she's gone. She's gone. No I one mean, cares. Just, she lives on a prison moon it's now. Just, it's really bad writing. It's really bad series continuity, and this is why the first season I think gets a lot of shit, and it, I think rightfully so. It was a, uh, I mean, like from what we just watched, it was a grab bag. There was a couple of good, couple mediocre, and couple of really bad. Um, but the really the really good thing about D- D- DS9 that they really did, and I felt like, is that when we as, as we review the later uh, episodes and the you know the later seasons, is that they learn from a lot of these mistakes in this first season. Well, I'm glad because this type of shit. I was about to say there's not still bad episodes in each season. I'm willing to are. suspend my fucking disbelief, but you got to meet me halfway on but that yeah, shit. I, I yeah, I honestly say. Uh, well, I I I started getting way ahead of you guys. So I'm like midway. Maybe in a little bit more than midway through season two at this point, wow. I could say like it's way. I you think just, I'm, there's I'm a marked not done with season one. There's a marked fucking increase by, in quality. By, by next week, we should be done with season. Yeah, uh, so, uh, so I don't know. There's only 19 episodes in this season, so we're at 12 now. So we could probably finish it off in the next one. Well, I think I think we did say that we were gonna give um, unless we, unless you don't feel the season finale for this one needs its own episode. I don't think it does. Okay, I think you can just discuss it, it in the well, natural and, course. And, and the other ones, I think we, they might consider doing that. But this yeah, one, well, guess, season one. I mean, they weren't sure if they were going to get renewed. It's fair pretty enough, obvious. Fair so, uh, but they, I do think the season finale of this season is good. But we'll get to that when in, in the due course of time. So next week. Uh, you so see you guys next week, next Tuesday. We'll uh, we'll have watched the rest of the season, and we'll let you know our thoughts on each episode. If you want to check out the previous episode, uh, I'll link to it in the description. We'll put it in a playlist or something. We'll, it'll be easy to find. All right, thanks you guys for watching, and uh, see you next time. Peace, peace.